Now, in our last segment, we spoke about spiritual consolation and spiritual desolation. This time, we want to make some distinctions about both of these. There is spiritual consolation. That's what Ignatius is speaking about. So, for example, if we think of the woman who prays with the um, Mark 5 passage, and she sees how Jesus says, daughter, with such love to this woman, and her own heart lifts up with a warm and happy sense of Jesus saying that same word to her and the love in Jesus' heart for her. It's very clear that this is consolation. That is, it's an uplifting movement of the heart, but it's very much on the spiritual level, on the level of faith, on the level of her relationship with the Lord. Now, there is also another kind of uplift of heart and therefore consolation, which is on the natural level, and I'm going to call it the non-spiritual level. Now, non-spiritual doesn't necessarily mean bad. There are many very healthy and good non-spiritual consolations. So think, for example, of um, just enjoying the, the beauties of nature. You, you see beautiful skies or water or mountains. Uh, you get some good exercise and you feel good. You listen to some beautiful music and you feel an uplift of heart. You work hard at a project and it turns out well. You spend time with friends or with family. There, there is a whole range of very healthy, non-spiritual consolations which God has built into our lives and intends that we enjoy. But, but in the rules for discernment, in which everything is on the spiritual level, Ignatius is speaking about specifically spiritual consolation. Now, having made that distinction, we don't need to overstress it too much because very often in God's providence, healthy, non-spiritual consolation is the space into which God infuses the grace of spiritual consolation. So, for example, we read in the life of St. Therese of the Child Jesus, this is the last months of her life, when she already has her final illness. And on this particular day, her sister, who is with her in the Carmel, takes her out into the courtyard, the interior courtyard of the monastery, just to get her out of the, out of the building. And Therese notices under a tree in front of her a mother hen with her wings outstretched and the little heads of the chicks peeping out from under the safety of their mother's wings. And Therese does what I imagine any one of us would do if we saw that sight in the country or in a park somewhere. She stops and she enjoys looking at a charming scene from nature. Reverently, if we may approach that, Therese at this point is experiencing a very beautiful, healthy, non-spiritual consolation. There's a warm uplift of heart as she enjoys looking at a charming scene from nature. Suddenly, her sister notices that Therese's eyes have filled with tears. And when Therese later explains what happens, she tells her sister that, as I looked at that scene, it suddenly dawned on me that that's the image of my whole life. This is what God has done for me throughout all of my life. He has kept me safe in the shelter of his wings. And the way the Bible speaks of, of this so often, hide me in the shelter of your wings. And at this point, a deep sense of gratitude wells up in her heart and her tears fall expressing her gratitude to the Lord. So you can see the passage here. God has infused into a healthy, non-spiritual consolation, enjoyment at looking at a charming scene from nature, a specifically and beautiful spiritual consolation, a gift of an experience of his love which awakens deep gratitude in a very warm way in Therese's heart. Now, as uh, something to keep in mind then, a certain amount of healthy, non-spiritual consolation helps an awful lot in our spiritual lives. Now, on the other side, there is spiritual desolation, all right? and that's a heaviness of heart on the spiritual level. So for example, the man at 10 o'clock after the difficult day, and he usually prays with the Bible for 10 minutes, and there's the Bible, there's the phone, doesn't feel God's closeness, no energy for prayer, just discouraged about where things are spiritually. He is experiencing desolation, that is a heaviness of heart, and specifically on the spiritual level, on the level of his relationship with God. Now, if there is non-spiritual consolation, there is also non-spiritual desolation. And this, we experience this when we get, um, either our physical or emotional energies are depleted. So we're overtired and there's just a kind of heaviness that comes into everything, or we get discouraged, 
depression is the word we most use for that, and there's a kind of heaviness emotionally in everything that we do. Now, again, Ignatius is speaking about specifically spiritual desolation, but by exact parallel with consolation, that does not mean that non-spiritual desolation has no significance for the spiritual life. If we find ourselves always being too tired, always being somewhat depressed, then for the sake of our spiritual lives, we need to do something about that. Many problems in the spiritual life resolve when we pay wise attention to the needs of our humanity on the non-spiritual level. Because just as God will often infuse spiritual consolation into healthy non-spiritual consolation, so very often the enemy will bring spiritual desolation into areas of non-spiritual desolation when we're overtired, when we're discouraged and depressed. So, if we take good care of our humanity on the non-spiritual level, if one of us finds himself or herself saying, I'm always, always worn out, I'm always feeling exhausted, or I'm always feeling somewhat depressed, work with that. Take healthy steps to deal with that. Speak with a wise person about it. Make healthy changes in your life. And you'll find in a wonderful way that not only will your life on just the natural, non-spiritual level get better, but your spiritual life will get an awful lot easier too. To give a very simple example, you know those days when you feel like, today I just can't pray? You know what solves that for me very often? I just get some exercise, and then I'm all set to pray. And the problem never was that I couldn't pray or didn't want to. I do want to. It's just that I hadn't paid attention to a need of my humanity on the non-spiritual level. Now, look. A certain amount of non-spiritual desolation, tiredness, or emotional expenditure is normal and can even be, I'd say, holy in a well-lived life. Like the mother who's up with her ill child several nights in a row, or the student who gets pretty tired as he or she goes through uh, papers and exams and so forth. The mother and the student do need to recuperate their energy in healthy ways. A certain amount of non-spiritual desolation is normal, but if you find yourself saying, that there's just too much of this, it's always like this, work with it, because if you do, you're gonna find that spiritually things are gonna get a lot better. Now, if you're asking yourself, how do I actually do this? How do I deal with this whole issue of non-spiritual desolation that can become spiritual desolation? How do I deal with that? We're gonna see Ignatius give us a whole wealth of tools to do that. Thank you.